Anaheim Ducks Hockey is brought to you by Honda, official vehicle of the NHL and Anaheim Ducks. And by Toshiba, leading innovation. Welcome back inside Honda Center. Time for tonight's Keys to the Game, brought to you by your helpful SoCal Honda dealers. For those, we go to the Anaheim bench and Lisa Hillary. John, thank you. Bob, the Vancouver Canucks oh, are a team. Oh, Defense first, they block a lot of shots. What does that mean for your team? Well, you know, you got to have your head up when you're shooting, and again, you got to have traffic going to the net. So anytime we can get pucks through, have a little bit of traffic, hopefully we can get something to go in early. Thanks, Bob. Good luck. Thank you. John? Thank you, Lisa. Eddie Lack, the birthday boy, celebrates his 26th birthday tonight, and he gets the starting goal for the Canucks. He started here at Honda Center on November the 10th in the only meeting of the year between these two clubs. He was solid in that game. Bryant gave up just two goals in an eventual 3-1 loss. And uh, he is the guy that plays a lot of the second half of back-to-backs for the Canucks, and that is very impressive to me, John. He's been able to put great numbers uh, up on the board this season. And how about the backup tonight for the Vancouver Canucks? Remember this guy? Rob Laurie. He once was the backup for the Anaheim Ducks. He's like the renter goalie. He comes in tonight because Roberto Luongo was not dressed. Apparently, he must have tweaked something last night in the game against the LA Kings. Remember, there was a collision with Dustin Brown yep. and Roberto Luongo. So perhaps the reason why Luongo not dressed for the tilt and Rob Laurie serves as the backup. And those highlights of Laurie in a duck sweater from last season when he had to fill in for a little under four minutes of a game as the Ducks were awaiting the arrival of Frederick Anderson, who was coming from Norfolk of the American League, and his flight didn't arrive in time for him to be on the bench. As the game was going, the backup goal is changed on the fly in that one. And Anderson did arrive in time to work the Anaheim bench. Here's a two-on-one for the Canucks. The pass across intended for Zach Cashin didn't make it to him. And the Ducks dodge a bullet there. Daniel Winnick trying to one-hand the puck into the zone, and he's stepped into by Tom Sestito. And Sestito and Jackman have a conversation as the puck goes the other way. No answer because Ryan Kessler is able to run it down. A little bit of a surprise line with Cassian and Sestito patrolling the wings with Ryan Kessler. It's a lot of beef on that line. No Chris Higgins in the Vancouver lineup tonight. As he was a late scratch, they've called up Ben Ferrio from Utica of the American League. There's a deflection that comes right into the goal crease, and that wreaks havoc as Hiller just had it hit him. And the Ducks back the other way as Bolesky can't reach the pass from Winnick. They're too bad. Hit. Well, the Ducks have had some players wide open and have not been able to find them with pucks so far here. Perry tries to wrap it around, and Lack had the paddle of the stick down. And was down to one knee. Getzloff intercepts in the neutral zone. But can't find the handle. And David Booth rolls it into the Anaheim zone. Sammy Botman gets inside and they tie one another up. Puck dug out by the captain who moves it quickly. And Perry has his pass. Glance off a of Vancouver stick. Hansen got a piece of it. And Richardson lays it back as the Canucks go for changes. Vancouver in their road whites. For some reason, they waved the ice in here. No one made contact with that pass, so play goes on. Zach Galpin from behind the net feeds it out to the line and across for Dan Hamuse. Purposely sends it wide as he had no shooting angle. And it's rifled off the side of the goal by Chris Tanev, who pinched up the far goal. So John, much of John Tortorella's criticism of his own team has been about a lack of a forecheck. They're coming hard here in the opening moments of this game. And yeah, following a loss last night at Staples Center, in which they surrendered 49 shots on goal, Tortorella said his team is going to have to be harder to play against in these division games if they're going to put up more resistance than they did in losing 3-1 to the Kings. Yannick Weber plays it ahead. Andrew splits it in. Trying to bring it back up the wall as Weeson just inadvertently clears the zone. Mike Santarelli lays it back. Henrik Sedin throws it in and it's offside as it went off a fowler and that's a break for the Ducks as it went right to Daniel. The only dangerous looking shot was actually a straight one. Sestino tries to throw it in front of the net. It goes off the stick of Hampus Lindholm and then there's the battle for possession of the puck immediately in front of Jonas Hiller and the Ducks goal crease. Boschman came in late, cleared out the Vancouver player. to get 
get the opportunity and missing the gaping four by six with Santorelli. Led the other way, Cogliano drops it back. Boivu in behind it, and Cogliano steps in front, finds a wide open price. Well, Bolsonaro the drive just wide. Didn't get a tip as he had Boivu parked at the side of the net and Silverberg. Santorelli finds the trailer in the Anaheim zone. Kevin Bieksa, that's hell. By Jonas Hiller. You know, normally the rule of thumb for a goaltender, especially if Honda Center, don't go out of the crease if the puck is on the glass. When Bexa shoots this in, it's along the boards. It takes a funny hop off the ice. Now it gets up into the glass and on the stanchions, and Jonas Hiller cannot believe that he's not fishing the puck out of his net. That was a wide open net for Santorelli and he just whips on it and shoots it about a foot wide. Boy, what a break for Anaheim. Mike Santorelli, a one-time 20-goal scorer a couple of seasons ago with the Florida Panthers. And he may see that one in his sleep tonight. Allen's stick breaks in half as he blocks the bid from Yannick Weber. In front, it's Kessler. And after giving his stick up to Allen, Benino kicks it out of the zone. Zach Cashin brings it back in. Working on Lindholm, drops it back, and Sestito throws it to an open point. Nobody home. The Gremlins the Kremlins are out tonight, John, at Honda Center. It's not like we haven't seen them before. Sestito serves it over, a shot wide of the mark off the wing. Comes all the way back out center ice off the stick of Brian Kessler. Kessler, the leading goal scorer this season for the Canucks, was 16, had their only goal last night, and that loss to the Kings. Lindholm chases in the end zone, moves it around the boards, and it's picked off the wall by Perry. Fowler, under duress at the line, has to turn away and get some separation from David Booth. Goes across the high slot and serves it below the goal line. Chris Canev is there. And this one is tipped into the Anaheim zone. No icing as Henrik Sedin gets there first. Excuse me, it's Yannick Hansen. And the centering pass comes through an empty slot and back out center ice. You know, you're watching the Canucks here. They're, they're off to a quick start. You can see they're moving the puck very effectively through the neutral zone. And this game has been played in Anaheim's end so far. Jackman comes up with it at center and throws it on that. Black serves a long rebound away. Sets sprawling as Valeski looks at the official as he gets back up. Richardson keeps it alive at the other end, and it's Jackman's turn to go flying into the boards. He gets back up, got inside on Kevin the exit, but his point is covered there by Ben Ferrio. Ferrio, a one-time San Jose Shark, signed as a free agent in the offseason, came over from the Rangers organization. Frozen to the side of the net. And he's got a horseshoe early on, Brian. The yeah, Anaheim net mine has been living right. He lost sight of that puck, and it bounced straight back out into the crease area. It was a dangerous looking play. Stretch pass picked off by Benino. He's chopped down by Delphi as he brings it into the Vancouver end. Bob back to the line, and Botman holds it in. Jamie Solano to center as he went in behind the net and it deflects all the way out to neutralize. Botman serves it right back in. Gets it back. Thinks better than the one time. Now feeds Benino in the corner behind the net for Solana. Open at the point is Fowler. His wrist shot tipped wide off of Vancouver stick. Benino trying to get it back to the point. It was pestered there and Boshima had to retreat into neutralize. Let's go for a change as the Canucks bring it into the Anaheim zone. A quick transition as Boshima moves it ahead. And Benito gets it deep. Yeah, good job by Benito. Take that extra foot in the neutral zone. Make sure he got to the red line. Canucks the other way. Zach Cassie gets it on net. And off the stick of Hiller, that was a dangerous looking little rebound. Anaheim able to clean it up, clear the zone though. Sestito gets a touch, so no icing. And Hiller sets it up for Lindholm. Perry throws it cross ice. Hampus has center red, gets it deep. And he lacks 7-3-1 on the year, plays it around. And Tom 
Sestito handles it there. Mm -hmm. Shot on goal thus far for the Ducks. That long range bid by Tim Jackman. So no test whatsoever so far for the rookie Lack. The Canucks put 36 shots at the Anaheim goal in their 3 1 loss here on November the 10th. They got a 5 1 shot advantage in the early going here tonight. Good job in the neutral zone by Botman, who got inside on Cassie and keeping it from that buck. Kept his feet moving. Two John, that, that was the key after Cassie was given it up. Pagliano gets a bump as he's in on the four check and the puck sent all the way back. This will be an icing call against the Canucks. A couple of nervous moments surrounding the Anaheim Bowl crease, and here's one of them. Puck comes off the end boards and then just kind of bounces crazily out in front of the crease before Delpe can get to it. Hiller able to sweep it aside. And the responsibility of the goaltender, pucks in and around the net. Don't let anything come back into the blue paint that's within a couple of feet of your goalposts. That is your territory, and you need to make sure that you own it. You don't let anything through. The referees for tonight's game is assigned by the National Hockey League. John A. Bear and Kevin Pollock loved them in the usual suspects. And the linesmen are Shane Heyer and Darren Gibbs, not one of the Beaches. No score early on at Honda Center. Well, here's the penalty to Corey Perry. And look where he's standing here. He's not right up to the hash mark. And so when Hansen jumps inside of him, now he's at a different angle. And he kind of reaches, and that's always a problem. Inadvertently trips up Anna Hansen, and that's going to pass for a couple of minutes. So, a much maligned uh, Vancouver power play. Uh, John Cordarella has not been pleased with their production as of late. Gets their opportunity now. Just two of 23 are the Canucks in their last eight games on the power play, and on the faceoff, gets them off clears the zone. The Ducks penalty kill all the way back to 81 percent after that. Abysmal start to the season. Now 19th in the league. The Vancouver power play is 23rd in the loop and they turn it over. Gets off, can't reach it as it's lobbed all the way back right on goal. And Eddie Lack forced to cover. And Anaheim gets a whistle. Daniel Winnick out on that top penalty killing unit to start with. Uh, Winnick is uh, given the uh, center's goal for tonight's game. Matthew Perot, a healthy scratch tonight. So uh, Daniel Winnick will actually center the Ducks' fourth line with Koleski and Jackman on the wings. Winnick, a healthy scratch. Friday against Edmonton, snapping a 174 games played streak. As the Ducks just continue to rotate players through. Of course, Winnick got some time at center in the preseason as well. And he's played a couple of games already this year in the middle. As Daniel Sedin's bid is in the glove of Jonas Hiller. Daniel Sedin has been relatively long range. He's got more than 25 goals uh, in each of the last six complete seasons. So while well, most of his work is done down a little bit closer to the goal crease, he does have a very accurate shot. Third player in Canucks history ever to score 300 goals in the Vancouver sweater. Daniel Sedin moves it to Garrison, whose shot is off the leg of Koivu. And now Daniel Sedin out high will drop it off and move down low. Kessler rips it home on a one-timer. The pass all the way from Henrik on the far boards. Penalty costly as Ryan Kessler rips home goal number 17 of this season. Scored last night against the Kings. And this is a pretty good one-timer. Backs into a soft area, and he gets pretty good wood on it. The difficulty for Jonas Hiller here is that he probably can't see the pass come across. We saw Sestito doing a nice job at the top of the Anaheim goal crease. And usually when goalies get beat on a long lateral pass like that with a one-timer, it's because they don't actually realize that the puck has been passed until it's a little bit too late, and Hiller was slow to get across. Seventh power play goal of the season for Kessler. That as well as a team leading goal. And as was the case last night against the Kings, Canucks strike first and they do so on the power play. Maybe that power play unit won't be so maligned after all. As it's 1 0 Vancouver. Penner goes in after it, gets inside on Dan Hammers. But he's double teamed and it's pulled away by David Booth. 
And outlets to Brad Richardson, the former Los Angeles King, into the Anaheim zone. Richardson having a nice year for the Canucks after coming over as an unrestricted free agent. Already has eight goals this season. Gets locked, blocks a point shot, and puts his head down. Henner nudges it into the Vancouver zone. The Canucks in transition. Hansen throws it across. Miller has to stay put. And we got a whistle. And I believe another penalty. Are the too many men on the ice here? Called against the Ducks. Judging by the expression on Bruce Boudreaux's face, it is not good news. We'll get you up to date when we return right after this. Well, the Ducks have taken a too many men on the ice panel. You see four Anaheim players in your frame right now. As the camera shifts, you're going to see two more. That means a total of six. That's cheating. And that's going to cost them a couple of minutes. A critical moment in this game because Vancouver scores on their opening power play of the game. Uh, Tortorella was talking about more net front presence being uh, one of the keys that he was looking for. Sestito provided that on the opening goal of the hockey game. The power play goal moments ago at 940. Kessler from Henrik and Daniel Sedin. And it's 1-0 Vancouver. Those three guys will play a lot, as Brian mentioned. The Sedin's getting penalty killing time. Kessler always has. And of course, they're going to play a lot of power play time as well. Jason Garrison, leading scoring defenseman for the Canucks this season, brings it out of the zone. And Henrik gains the line. His pass across. There's a one timer. Not a lot on it off the stick of Sestito. A reminder coming up later on in our broadcast while you can enjoy a cold one throughout the evening, we will enjoy a cold one with Miller time later on in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite as we relive one of the more important moments in tonight's contest. The injury to Alex Burroughs. Sestito is the, one of the players that uh, clearly the head coach is giving a real opportunity to play a more prominent offensive role for Vancouver. Sestito scored the Canucks only goal in here on November the 10th when they lost to the Ducks 3 to 1. Pass through the middle of the penalty killing box comes all the way to the near boards. Fowler goes up the middle intercepted by Garrison who whips it wide in a hurry. Henrik Sedin finds Daniel and he returns the favors. They overload the right side of the zone on the dot. Daniel angles it back. Garrison walks the line. Henrik tees it up. They score. Deflected. I'm not sure whether Sestito touched it or it went off an Anaheim stick in front. Well, the Ducks are getting what they deserved in this game. Uh, two power play goals from Vancouver. Bad offensive zone penalty followed by a too many men on the ice penalty. And Vancouver's power play has made them pay. Here's the shot have gone off the foot of Cam Fowler. I was watching the body language of Fowler after that puck went in the back of the net. And uh, judging by his reaction, I would say it was an own goal off of the Dutch defender. So not much chance for Jonas Hiller. And a great start to this game for Vancouver. So Henrik Sedin undoubtedly will be credited with the goal. And it's a two for two start on the power play. Canucks and a 2 0 lead. As Daniel Sedin and Jason Garrison will draw the helpers. And a good Sunday night crowd has been taken out of it early on. Solani into the Vancouver zone, puts it on the backhand and gets it in deep. Panino throws it right back to the net. Brian Allen steps up and lays it back. Tamu winds and fires off a stick and off the side of the net. Paul Mary collects it there, cycles it back. Benino to the point, Botman quickly to the net off the stick of Richardson. He'll use the boards to scale it out, and Botman careful at his own blue line. Finds a lane as both teams get changes. Sammy's shot deflected into the netting over the glass and out of play. Well, the one thing that this team has done all year is show the ability to come from behind to win hockey games. Especially after giving up the opening goal of the game, the Ducks record 12-5-1, next best record, along to Boston and these Vancouver Ducks, the only other team with above 500 record, given that circumstance. 
Ducks have given up the first two goals here tonight as they work in the Vancouver zone. We're going to get one back. Enter's centering pass was deflected behind its intended target, Corey Perry. And Hansen leads it back into the Anaheim zone. Lindholm driven into the end boards by Kessler. The two of them continue to battle on the puck in their skates. Kessler comes away with it. Trying to spin it in front. Couldn't connect with Sestito. Lindholm uses the boards ahead for Corey Perry. And gets lob. Off the tape for Penner. And it'll trickle right in on goal. Eddie Lack scoops it up there. This season with the Ducks score five goals or more as they have in each of their last two contests. Hooters will give you five free wings. You can print the coupon and head to Hooters. Your destination for free wings in Southern California. Ben Lovejoy is the hottest offensive player right now for the Ducks. And, uh, I, I've been impressed with the way that Lovejoy has improved his shooting, John. He just, you know, you watch the players every day in practice, and they, Bob Woods works with the defenseman an awful lot on one timing the puck and, and, and getting shots through from the blue line. And I don't think there's any question who the most improved member of the the blue liners are in that regard. It's, it's Lovejoy. He was a plus three on top of the two goals he scored in here against Edmonton on Friday night. Plus five since becoming a father. As we mentioned the other night, it seems to agree with him. The New Hampshire native becoming a new father. Middle of last week. Daniel Sedin handles in the Anaheim zone and throws it across. Mike Santorelli goes after it, and it rolls to the side of the net, and Hiller pokes at it, and again, it skips through the goal crease. Canucks on top two to nothing, but there have been a number of near misses in the blue paint in front of the Anaheim goal here. We're only 13 and a half minutes into the hockey game. Santorelli, a sixth-year man out of Northern Michigan University already with his third NHL team, plays it back, and now the regroup. Sends him in on left wing. The Canucks into the Anaheim zone. Santa really slung down by Sammy Botman. Dalpy fended off by Lovejoy. Nice play there. And he backhands it up the boards. Bolesky gets it to the line and then picks it up and races through neutral ice. Tries to lay it off for Winnick. And all he does is draw himself offside. An inauspicious start at Honda Center for the Ducks. among forwards in the National Hockey League you won't find a team that probably plays their top three as much as John Tortorella plays Ryan Kessler Daniel and Henrik Sedin it's shades of his days behind the Tampa Bay bench when he had Brad Richards Vinny LeCavalier and Martin St. Louis and we are told uh, a lot more time with the Sedins on the penalty kill unit as well so we, we've seen him with Ryan Getzloff this season being used a lot more frequently by Boudreaux and Short-handed situations, the same thing applies with the Sedins at Vancouver. When the Canucks came here in November, Henrik Sedin was fifth in the league in ice time. Usually a statistic reserved for defensemen as far as the top 10 or 20 or even 30 or 40 in the league go, but his minutes have come down as Winnick's bid ends up in the netting above the high line. Daniel Winnick and then a couple of little scars on the nose of his. That's what if that nose was broken the other day. He got a bit of a butt end in the face. He said, I'm not sure. <laughs> Only a hockey player would be unsure if his nose was broken. Solani steps in, wins the draw, and Benino's shot is deflected wide of the mark as Richardson got in the way. And Allen trying to get it back to the net went off a skate, so he has to chase the clear. Sammy Votman loses the handle at the line. He's fortunate to knife it across the stripe and a whistle as Richardson inadvertently brings it back in offside. Mm, nothing happening smoothly for the Ducks uh, so far in tonight's game. Well, plenty of time left, of course. A lot of mishandling with the puck and uh, some strange uh, bounces in and around uh, the Anaheim net. Cause for concern. Have not tested any lack, but twice officially with shots on goal. 15 minutes in. And the other end, the Canucks, by virtue of those two power plays, have 11. Both of their goals coming on the power play. 
And the second shot on Lack, by the way, was a roller from center ice. Getzloff gloves down a clearing attempt and gets it to Perry below the goal line, but he's crunched, and Sestito comes up with the puck. Kevin Bieksa the other way, leads it ahead. Zach Cassian on his off wing, hit the post. And the rebound went off the shin guard of Penner, who lobs it the other way. Perry racing after it will nullify a would-be icing, but coming over was Hamus to tip it away. So the havoc continues in the blue paint in front of the Anaheim Bowl. We've had some harrowing moments, some bad bounces, a post shot, and given up a couple here. As Hamus rolls it right to the top of the crease. And again, it glances off of Getzloff and just wide as Kessler was picking himself up off the ice. Hamus gloves it down at center. Ducks trying to get changes, and the Sedins lead it right back in. Mike Santorelli. The lucky man who gets to play with the Sedin twins tonight. Goes behind it and as Henrik hands it off to Daniel. Santorelli moves it to the line. Cam use across. Quick puck movement and Santorelli broke his stick. Koivu drops down to chip the puck away. And Campus Lindholm up with it. A long strike to center and I don't believe Cogliano got a touch on it. So icing is the call. I want to go back at that last post shot by Cassian. Now watch Hampus Lindholm, and he's going to pinch in here. And it's okay. He pinches in. Stop it here, guys, because here's Dustin Penner. Here's Francois Boschman. The problem is not with the pinch. The problem is, is that both players chase after Kevin Bieksa, leaving Cassian wide open, and he rips it off the far post. So that's, that's a, a mix-up in res defensive responsibilities in the open ice that uh, comes very close to costing the Ducks a goal. Jacob Silverberg in full flight into the Vancouver zone, not to his knees as the rest of the mates change behind the play. Gloved down by Bolesky as it comes to center. He carries right back in. Gets it to the side of the Vancouver net off the stick of lap. The Canucks have been able to get out of the zone very quickly when they recover possession of the puck so far in this one here tonight. And they do it again there. Jackman brings it back to center red and flips it in. Winnick strides after it. Trying to drag it along the boards. It gets away from Ben Ferrio. Again turns away. Sets up Pileski. His shot blocked. Winnick gets it back to the line. Lovejoy's shot. It's off of the stick of Dale Weiss. But over top of the goal. Again recovered by Anaheim. Winnick brings it in front. Trying to jam it from a bad angle. And Pileski bumping with Ferrio. To the line held in across Fowler's one timer blocked there. And back from the Canucks, they want to get a change. After Weiss blocked it, Delphi turns it in and goes to the bench for a change. Best shift of the game for Anaheim, and, and it comes from their fourth line. They don't get many scoring opportunities, but at least they get a little offensive zone time. Hamus throws it off the skate of a teammate, and now it's David Booth in full flight. And behind the play, Paul Mary has dropped the gloves with Brad Richardson. I did not see what led to this. A rare fight for both of these guys. As Richardson pushes Paul Mary to the front of the Anaheim bench, and they tumble to the ice and top one another. That would be the welterweight division. Paul Mary and Richardson figure out how this all got started. Keep an eye on the top of the screen. There's Paul Mary and Richardson. Uh, Brandish sticks a little bit, get them moved up, and eventually challenge who was offered and accepted. Richardson has been a nice pickup for the back to the He's a, a little bit of a sandpaper to his game. And I think John Tortorella was likes having a number of those players in his lineup. Well, Richardson's a tremendous penalty killer. He's a heart and soul guy. I don't know any coaches that don't care for players like that. As I mentioned, he's already got eight goals this season. Since coming over from the Kings as a free agent, signed a two-year deal. He had one goal in 16 games last season for Los Angeles. So they each get five for fighting as Penner and Perry try to work a two-man game into the Vancouver zone. Down to two minutes to go in the opening frame. Two-nothing Canucks. As the puck tipped right back into the Vancouver zone again, and it's Hamus who plays it away. 
Angled back into the Anaheim zone. Will be no icing here. Allen lets it go for Botman as he fended off Kessler. Passed ahead, touched by Getzloff, but recovered by Chris Tanev. And he loses the puck. Perry finds an open man. Lovejoy's shot, looking for a tip, ends up on the high glass. He got the tip. Petter did get a little touch yeah. on that puck. Tipped it just wide of the goal. Tanev out of Rochester Institute of Technology reverses it away. And the Canucks will change as Henrik Sedin strides through neutral ice. Daniel shot goes wide. He didn't get the tip. Santorelli feeds it to the point. The X has sent it wide. Santorelli covers the point. Garrison moves to the middle. Santorelli drives below the goal line. Under a minute to go in the period. Henrik Sedin serves it back. Looking for BX is sneaking down. The pass was tipped. And again, tipped right to the goal mouth. Defended by Jonas Hiller. You know, Silverberg was there. Getzloff was there. And uh, we've got all different kinds of line combinations on the ice right now for Bruce Biedro. Fowler whips it in, heads to the bench for a change around the boards that have come for Benino, but he can't keep it in. Down to half a minute to go. As Francois Beauchemin drives it right back in. Garrison gets it from his netminder lap. And this puck came outside the stripe as Silverberg argues whether or not he kept it in. The play whistled down with only 22 seconds remaining in the opening frame. The Ducks finally got a shot towards Eddie Lack. It was uh, Ben Lovejoy who threw it to the front of the net. Dustin Penner's there, and he gets the shaft of the stick on it and actually deflects it up and over top of the net. Good effort by Dustin Penner to get to the front of the goal. Bruce Boudreau puts Penner back at least to start the game on the big line with Getzloff and Perry. Final 15 seconds of the opening period. Ducks have just three shots on goal. The Ducks have struck twice on the power play. Just the second time all season, Vancouver has more than a goal. One goal on the power play in a single game. Jackman got it to the net. Loose in front and jammed wide. A second effort from Jackman there. And the best pressure of the period comes as the horn sounds for Anaheim. Again, it's Spileski, Winnick, and Jackman line. And it starts with a simple play with Tim Jackman shooting off of the wing. And then there's a rebound. The defensemen have to turn to locate it. And the Ducks create a little bit of chaos. Here's the shot in first from Lindholm that Black just boxes right back out in front of his own goal freeze. Ham just gets away with leaving that puck right on the doorstep. And Jackman and Boschman are right there. Unfortunately, they can't bang it home. Uh, a sluggish period again for Anaheim and the Canucks, whose power play had been having issues of its own, look deadly in the opening 20 minutes with a couple of power play goals to the story. Indeed, Vancouver was two for 23 on the power play in their last eight games. Tonight, they're two for two, and they lead 2 nothing after one at Honda Center. Anaheim Ducks Hockey is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Try the new Fajita Ranch Melt for only $3.99 plus tax at a participating Jack in the Box near you. 2-0 Canucks after one period of play time for tonight's call to the locker room. Brought to you by Dollar Loan Center. We go to the Anaheim bench and Lisa Hillary. John, thank you. Brad, Vancouver's had some wide open ice out there. How do you take away their time and space? Oh, we're just going to tighten up defensively right now. We're playing a little bit too loose that period. They took advantage of. They're a good team, very skilled, and we just have to make sure we're we tighten up defensively. Not a great offense for us. Thanks, Brad. John. Thank you, Lisa. Jonas Hiller gave up two goals in the opening period against the Edmonton Oilers on Friday night. After that, he shut the door in what was eventually a 5-2 Ducks victory. You've got to be thinking, Brian. At least Jonas is probably thinking I need to do the same thing to get here tonight. Well, tremendous uh, sense of deja vu, I would say, for Duck fans watching this game because Anaheim was very sluggish in that opening period against the Oilers as well. They were sluggish here in the opening 20 tonight, but this is a much better team than Edmonton with a lot more structure to their game. The opportunities will probably not be as prevalent for the Ducks as they were the rest of the way against the Oilers. 
Miller riding a personal 10 game winning oh, streak. A that goes uncalled against the X. But Cagliano gets it back to Silva. Tipped in by Koibu. Give Andrew Cagliano credit. He looked for the call. He didn't get it. He went back to play at hockey. That took 24 seconds to start this period. There's the hook by Biexa. Cogliano can't believe there was no call. And then Koivu's persistence frees up a puck. Cogliano gives it to Silverberg. Silverberg who was telling me this morning that he's had a couple of chances. They're just not going in for him. Buries this one. And I believe it goes through lap. Yes. Between the arm and the body of the Vancouver netminder. So just like that, the Ducks have cut the Vancouver lead in half, and they have a Sunday night sellout crowd back into the hockey game. Boy, if you're a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. That's exactly what you're hoping for coming out of the locker room. Yeah, you get the crowd engaged. Uh, and first of all, you make it a game. You pull within one, and uh, the pressure shifts over to the shoulders of your opponent. And Aaron passed through the middle, deflected, so no icing. Miller wanders out to play. And gets him off, fires it across. Motion drops it off for Penner. His pass across to Perry. He's back out to make the save. Excuse me. It was Getzloff. Penner will hold it in again. Plenty of time for Motion to get to Getzloff. His shot blocks. Ends up in behind the net, and Perry couldn't get to it. Ryan Allen pinches all the way below the goal line. He didn't get there. Cassian clears the zone. Kessler chips it around. Botman lays it back, and Bieksa missed the mark. Boy, Sammy Botman got caught at the blue line there, and that was a two-on-one break for the Canucks. Perry the other way. His shot trickles right to the goal. Oh, Manino made a bid from his knees as he was somehow able to pull the trigger. And Lack will hold on to the bid off the far boards from Bolesky. Well, the Ducks have as many shots here in the second period as they had in that entire first period. And these are of a much higher quality than we saw in the opening 20 minutes. It was that last play where the puck just kind of sits there. Benino just rips it. And Eddie Lack just takes away the bottom of the net. Nick Benino, and he keeps on. He had scored on that play, John. There was a little bit of space. Just could not elevate the puck quite high enough. Ducks working for the equalizer now just two minutes into the second period. The official on the goal, Koivu's eighth of the year from Silverberg and Cagliano at the 24-second mark of the second period. Benino digs it out of the corner and off the skate of Solani. Now he gets it to him for the second effort. He got some good help from Brian Allen. Solani pitches it into the back and Garrison gets there first. Yannick Weber rims it around. The former Montreal Canadian got it ahead to Zach Dalton. And Hansen swipes it into the Anaheim zone. Lovejoy moves it ahead. Solani into the middle of the ice for Fowler, who jumps into the play. Kicks it deep into the zone, trying to jump around Bieksa behind the net. Cam gets the carom. Back to the line. Gets off, covering the point. Club save by Lack. Gitzloff got a lot on that one. Perhaps a little bit higher than he was hoping for. Winnick was in front. Jackman was in front. Gitzloff hammers in and no problem for Lack who stares into the left hand. Eddie Lack coming into the game seventh in the National Hockey League with the goals against average of just 2.02 has appeared in 14 games this year. Had to fill in for those three games in which Roberto Luongo was out with a groin injury. And John Tortorella said, I didn't think we missed Luongo at all in his absence. Part of the game, I caught Eddie Lack's pregame routine. Got the hoodie on, pulled up over his head. He's kind of walking through the, the arena, the hallways. Well. Yeah. Yes, the bowels of Honda Center. Six foot four. They list him at 187. And he makes a stick save here. Looks like he could tread water in a test tube. Lovejoy to the ladies' tees, and Lack denies that. Look at the confidence that Ben Lovejoy has now when he handles that puck. When there was a time he would have been looking to pass that off to Cam Fowler and, and hope that Fowler would get the shot through. Not now. Lovejoy holds the long line to split some wrister off a couple of skates, and he activates but can't keep it in, and it's lifted back 
Fowler hinges over to get it. Canucks trying to change. Fowler gets center red, puts it up on the glass and in. Black stays put and Kenner in on the board check. Nice play as he wins the puck. Gets off trying to, excuse me, Perry trying to feed it back and it was deflected away from Lindholm. The shots on goal in this second period. 7 0 got so lucky. Big collision there. Two Canucks down and one is hurt as Lindholm gets up and play goes on. Perry into the middle. Gets off. Just mishandled it at the moment of truth. Lindholm pounces on the loose puck, swept off his stick by Tannen, and now behind the play. Is that Zach Cassian? It, it is, John, and, and this is a dangerous play. He actually got kicked in the head by his own player. It was Tom Sestito who came in and had a beeline on Hampus Lindholm. And this is not pretty, folks. Watch what happens at the end. Lindholm ducks. Watch the skate of Sestito right there. Oh, you know, it looked from that angle that it was at least the side of the boot and not the skate blade. And that is fortunate. It's a scary moment for Zach Cassian. Watch Lindholm just duck and watch the leg whip right here. And it's right into the face of Zach Cassian. Sestino's got to get up and get back on the back check. He knows Cassian's hurt. And you can see the blood as he's attended to by the Canucks athletic trainer and of his own volition now making his way back to the Vancouver bench. Sestino gives him a tap. Cassian having a nice year. Seven goals already on the season, equaling what he did a year ago after coming over in the trade for Cody Hodgson from the Buffalo Sabres the year prior. Now he, he has delivered what the Canucks were expecting from him in that Buffalo trade. He's always been a big guy, a tough, tough player. But there was always that offensive upside that most people looked at him and said, we think he can score. And he's done that this year. See if Cassian returns or if not, if the report becomes available as to his condition. Meantime, the faceoff back in the Vancouver zone to the left of Eddie Black as the maintenance crew cleans up at the other end. And nothing else to stop it. You play slowing the momentum that the Ducks had built here in the early stages of the second period, not only by scoring the goal. But also by carrying the play. A reminder, you can enjoy ice skating with friends and family this year at the rinks. They offer daily public skating with a variety of hockey and figure skates to rent. Visit the rinks.com for the location nearest you. Solani and Richardson take the draw. And the Canucks control. Tanev to center, flips it in. And David Booth is there. Sends it back, and Tanev at the hash mark holds it in. Brian Allen breaks that play up below the goal line, and it's Sammy Botman who gets the handle. Tries that home run pass for Paul Mary. Paul Mary gets it off the boards in his backhander, but right through the blue paint. Nearly was able to get it back to the front of the net. As Benino got a stick on it. Oh, good speed again, away from the puck from Paul Mary. Paul Mary fought Richardson in the opening period. His second fight this year, just the third of his NHL career. He came in the latter stages of the period. Now it's Daniel Sedin in the Anaheim zone. Feeds it across. Oh, wow. Santarelli got a stick on it, and Hiller got to the far post as well. I think we know why Mike Santorelli has so many points this year. He's, he's got chances in this game. And we're playing with some pretty darn good players yeah, up they, front. They throw you out there with the Twins. You better produce or you probably won't be there very long. Well, here's the opportunity. And Lindholm is beaten on a bank pass in the neutral zone. And Sedin just throws it across. And again, Santorelli had a wide open net. And the puck just would not sit flat for him. Perhaps jammed him a little bit on that pass. Santorelli spent time with Nashville, Florida, and Winnipeg briefly before joining the Vancouver Canucks this season. Signed as a free agent, a relative bargain, a one-year, $550,000 contract. 
And Santorelli has paid the Canucks back with nine goals and 27 points. A value buy, to say the least. Puts it behind the Anaheim goal, and Hiller settles it there for foul. Camp takes a look. The U.S. Olympian moves it ahead, and Koivu, who has the Ducks goal, flips it in. Nice work by Silverberg, who put it right in front. Nobody home. Bieksa wipes it back into the Anaheim zone. Cogliano drew an assist on the Koibu goal. He now has 13 points in his last 13 games. Koibu with 13 points in his last 17 games. More of that secondary scoring. Here's how Vancouver rims the puck around a lot in the offensive zone. Santorelli steps out and just missed the mark. Kessler kept to the outside by Lovejoy, leaves it in the corner. And Koivu moves it up. Silverberg moves it up. The reason why a team does that is it forces defensemen to turn. And if you win the races to those loose pucks, it allows you then to create passing lanes for yourself. It forces movement in the defensive zone. It gets people out of their spots. And they have created a few opportunities in the Ducks' defensive zone as a result. The Ducks have come back with a vengeance here in this second period. It was Jacob Silverberg off a great forecheck by Anaheim that uh, brought the Ducks back within a single goal. They come close to tying it on a couple of different occasions. And it's all about attacking the goal crease. Didn't see a lot of that in the opening period. It has been significantly improved here. And look at the scoring chances. The Ducks have had four quality chances here in the second stanza. Face off in the neutral zone. Kessler and Getzloff to oppose one another. And Ryan Getzloff wins the draw. And a conversation off the faceoff ongoing between Corey Perry and Tom Sestito as play goes on. Sestito would love to get Corey Perry off the ice if he can. Oh, Perry gets thrilled as he picks the puck off the back of the neck, tried to bring it in front. Koshima holds it in, and Penner battles to keep it alive as well. Getzloff has Kessler all over him. Penner drops it back, and Lindholm with an ear point sends it around the board. Perry to Penner, and a glove save by Lack. Corey Perry is uh, trying to get himself going, John, it, it seems like, in this game. And the number of tactics that he uses to do that. Little stick, little face wash. Sestito takes offense, and then he tries to goad Sestito into taking a penalty. Sestito smartly does not drop the gloves. Sestito has uh, done a good job of targeting some of Anaheim's top players. And if he can get either one of those two gentlemen off the ice, serve him well. It's third in the league in penalty minutes is Sestito with 99. Coming into tonight's action. So he's been fairly successful throughout the year in finding dance partners. Hansen leads it into the Anaheim zone. Winnick taps it behind the net. Allen sneaks it up the boards and out. Brian Allen drawing back in. He was a healthy scratch on Friday. And a win over Edmonton. It's the fourth game he's missed this season. Botman reversing the puck away from pressure. David Booth trying to get it to the net and winning. Denying that. Puck comes into the high slot. Valeski is on it. Gets center red. Feathers it into the Vancouver zone. Jack crashing in on Yannick Weber. Valeski lost his stick puck to the near corner. And Fowler hustles to get there. Straight up in the air. It's gloved down. And Benino kept it alive in only momentarily. Fowler misses Benino with a pass in the neutral zone, then steps into a passing lane. And turns to get it. The Ducks ice time leader on the season. Turns on the Jets. Five points in his last four games for Fowler. And plus nine in that span. And Solani who tries to chase it down behind the net. But Ferriel clears the zone for the Canucks. And then Ferriel forces it into the Anaheim zone. He's all over Sammy Lott. Pass to flex out to the neutral zone as we approach the halfway mark of the hockey game. The Canucks on the top two to one. They laid off side so Dale Weiss couldn't play the puck. Solani picks it up up the middle for Benino and the 
pass didn't have a lot on it. It was a little bit of a suicide pass, so Benino lets it go through, and it ends up being icing. Yeah, uh, Benino got his head up at the very last second, and it's a good thing that he did. And I don't think he's upset at all that, uh, that this one is called for icing. He's just grateful he didn't get clocked in the neutral zone. Here's the pass, and you can see that stepping up on him is Dan Hamus. Face off to the right of Hiller. Henrik Sedin behind the net in front for Daniel, and that was broken up by Botman, who blocked that and comes all the way back. Anaheim able to get the change. Chris Tanna having a career year already with four goals. Leads the puck ahead, and the Canucks right back into the Anaheim zone. Santorelli to the corner. This pass intercepted by Koji, but up the middle. Clearing attempt is kept in by Hamus. Santorelli down low, working a two-man game with Henrik Sedin. Finds an open Chris Tanna, but the pass off his stick clears the line. And now Hamus pressured by Cogliano. Daniel feeds it across. Henrik drops it off. Turned over by the Canucks, and Silverberg gets the little pass from Koivu. Tried to go cross ice, but too many white sweaters. And Cogliano delivers the hit. Transition for the Ducks, and back they come. Winnick for the drive. Black backing into his net, just barely blocked it over the crossbar. It's almost like he didn't see that shot, the way he reacted. Strange play. Winnick behind the net gets it back as it's kept in in front. Point blank saved by Lack on Jackman. A great play by Daniel Winnick. A little delay by Winnick in behind creates a passing lane. And Tim Jackman with a glorious opportunity to tie this game up. Welcome back to Honda Center. 2 1 hockey game in favor of the Vancouver Canucks. Dan, you started that second period on fire. What changed? Where were the adjustments made? I think I just think it's urgency. You know, I don't think we really showed that in the first, and it's kind of been our problem of late. And I think we just got to get puck deep like we're doing and keep throwing at the net. Thanks, Dan. John. It's a one-goal hockey game with 9:20 to play in the second period, and Winnick wins the draw in the Vancouver zone. Lindholm into the middle, and Valeski's shot partially blocked. Winnick couldn't get it back to the net. That one ends up in the Vancouver penalty box. I want to go back to a play moments ago made by one of the young duck defenders, Sammy Votman. You stop it right here, guys, and then here's Votman down low, and I just want you to focus on him. The puck goes in behind the net. Look where he goes, front of the net, but then he gets his head on a swivel. Who's the most dangerous guy? Well, the other Sadine, not the one with the puck. I, don't, I can't tell which one it was, but the guy who was going to the front of the net, that given go play, that they are so dangerous with. Botlin reads it well, and that good active stick makes a nice defensive play. Here is the good one. That doesn't help you at all, does it? Tommy Botlin, speculation has him perhaps appearing in a couple of days on the Finnish Olympic team, as most of the countries in the next 48 hours will announce their rosters. Team USA, one of the early ones. Coming on the heels of the Winter Classic on New Year's Day. Of course, the World Junior Championships coming to a close. Speaking of international competition earlier today, Brian. Speaking of Team Fiddle. Defense of bragging rights. Who did the Swedes in the gold medal game? It's a border war there, too, when those teams get together. Russians claim the bronze, defeating Team Canada. Miller stops it behind the net. Makes a little pass to Boshimo, moves it up the boards, and it's nudged out. Nice play by Getzloff. Perry's there to collect, and he comes in, he fires, and Lack fights it off. Good play, good decision by Perry. Shoot from the angle and hope for the rebound. And Lack was square, and so if you're square, Puck usually ends up in a pretty good spot for Rory. Santorelli trying to spin at the other end. He has it taken away by Cam Fowler. Fowler stretches for Penner. Into the Vancouver zone. Drops it back. Gets off to Perry. And on his off swing, he was a little handcuffed. It wasn't in the wheelhouse. Corey gets it back and works it down low. Gets off. Whips it on the backhand out high. Lovejoy across to Fowler. Thinks better of it. Trying to open a passing lane. 
Captain gives it to him again. He'll take the shot. It hit at a lack and a penalty in front as Perry was cross-checked. And the Ducks will get their first power play of the night. Good pressure from the Ducks. Kevin Bieksa allowed Corey Perry to set the screen on the initial shot, but he wanted to make sure he was not going to get to the rebound. Good play by Getzloff here, who gets it back to Fowler, and there's the screen, and here's the reaction from Bieksa, who says, uh, you know what, I, I can't let a guy like Corey Perry get, hang get a handle on that rebound, and uh, it's a penalty against him, and an opportunity for the Ducks for their first power play. By the way, that was Corey Perry's first shot on goal, that little redirect of the Fowler point shot. The Canucks penalty minute leader on D is Kevin Bieksa. He sits for roughing. The big chance for Anaheim. Their power play has been much maligned of late as well. Just one power play goal in their last 10 games. One for 32 over that span. It's amazing that they have been able to win as many games um, without production from the team. Solani flies in and works it around to his fellow countryman, Botman. Two of them below the goal line. Valeski gives chase as well, but the Canucks fail to clear up the middle. It's Botman who intercepts. Takes the shot, fat rebound, and Solani turned away by Eddie Lack. Good work on the far wall to recover possession. Now Tanev able to work it free, and Hamus will clear. Dan Hamus has played a lot tonight for John Tortorella. It's Hiller who feeds it ahead. The Canucks trying to change Perry into the slot, and he waited a little too long. Santorella got a stick on it. Around to the near boards. Fowler holds it in. He brushes it back to Getzloff. His pass to Penner, and his bid was blocked. Benino works hard to recover possession, but then loses an edge, and Hansen sneaks it up the wall past him. Well, you see the urgency now in, in the Ducks game. I mean, they are fighting now for possession of loose pucks. 40 seconds left in the power play. Benino across the line. Gets locked. Rips it. Right pad saved by Lack. Harris keeps the feet moving as he recovers the long rebound. Gets locked. Finds the open man. Fowler looking for a tip, but it's deflected just wide. It was Perry in front who got a piece of it. Now Penner goes behind the net. Wide open again is Fowler. For Benino, right back. Fowler misfires. Angled up the wall and just out. Well, the penalty killers are gassed. If, if the Ducks can keep this puck in the offensive, go, oh, boy. Too bad. They go bring it back in offside. Even Lack looks a little gassed. Great pressure from the Ducks in the power play. Hamus can't get it out. Botman, great anticipation by him. There was the rebound that came across the team of Solani. And then Corey Perry trying to cut into the middle, and Mike Santorelli gets a little piece of the shaft from Corey Perry's stick. What's going on on that last section of the duck power play? Corey Perry all of a sudden has come alive in this game, and he has been dangerous. Lovejoy in the waning seconds of the power play can't get it to the net. The X is out of the box. The Canucks are full strength. Anaheim 0 for 1 on the power play. This will be an icing call against Vancouver. We're down to 5.08 to play in the second. Shots are now 20 and 12 in favor of Tame Solani and the Ducks. And they are dominating uh, this period of hockey for the Ducks. And uh, it's all about just getting punched to the front of the net. And one after another, it's 15 nothing. Shots on goal in favor of the Ducks so far this second period. Face-off win for the Canucks in the defensive zone, and it's Biesca who will skate it to center. Former Bowling Green State University Falcon bounces it to the far corner of the Anaheim zone. Lovejoy tied up. Winnick trying to help out. And he starts back the other way. Cross ice to Cogliano, who sends it in. Silverberg gives chase. Hard around by Garrison, not out. Lovejoy gets it to the net wide. And now Fowler forced to retreat as the Canucks clear. Winnick into the middle of the ice again, brings it across the stripe offside so everybody can catch their breath. Four and a half to go in the middle period. Bruce Boudreau knows that when you shoot the puck in the offensive zone, you force your opponent to turn, locate where the rebound has gone, and, and sometimes if you can get to those loose pucks quicker than your opponent, you get quick scoring opportunities. The Ducks have done that in this period. Out shooting Vancouver 15 to nothing and uh, have completely changed the momentum of this hockey game around. 
Face off control by the Ducks. Botman gets it in. Paul Mary cutting in from a sharp angle. Brings it into the crease. Oh, and he goes right into Eddie Lack, and the net is off. Well, remember, no Roberto Luongo for the Canucks. Paul Mary drives the crease. Rob Lorry, the rental. Pretty close eye on Eddie Lack, but uh, he's going to have to be in rough shape for him to leave this game. Palmieri lowers the shoulder, gets inside, and he's kind of shoved from behind by Dan Hamus right into his own goaltender. That's why there's no penalty call on the play. If you can't get your shoulder inside of that attacking forward, right now, allow don't bury him right on top of your own goaltender. I mean, if, if there's no contact there, the onus all of a sudden shifts to Kyle Palmieri to avoid contact with the goaltender, but not with Ham Hughes pushing him in that direction. Well, I don't think Rob Laurie was the only one watching intently to see if Eddie Lack would get up. John Tortorella and the rest of his coaching staff, Mike Gillis up to the press box, the general manager, probably all holding their collective breath for a moment there. Lack out to play it. Tortorella is working the referees, is John, right now. And everybody aware of Roberto Luongo uh, unable to dress for this game because of an injury. His injury result of a collision yesterday in the game against the Kings. Gum was chewing a little bit harder for Rob Laurie. I noticed that. The job was working pretty really good. Well, to say John Tortorella is a vocal coach is akin to saying the sky is blue. Is a guy that whether he's working the officials or just having a constant conversation with them always makes his opinions heard from behind his bench. His team on top two to one. As the Canucks move it around in the Anaheim zone, still seeking their first shot on goal of the second period. And the puck rolls off the side of the net. Kessler gets to it. Sestito goes to the front of the net. Now remember, the injury earlier in the period that sent Zach Cassian to the locker room. So John Tortorella's really had to juggle his lines here. Well, Mary blocks the shot. It's up for the score. What a great pass delivered to Matt Molesky. Who scores an enormous goal here for Anaheim? Here's the block, and away goes Paul Mary. But this pass is a thing of beauty. Backhand pass, saucered over the defenseman's stick. It lands flat for Bolesky, who just kind of chops it through Eddie Lack again. With a second puck that goes through the Vancouver netminder between the arm and the body, and the Ducks have tied this game up. What a great period! They have bounced back all the way. All right, now it's Paul Mary and Valeski who team up on a goal. Silverberg, Cotleon, and Boyd on the first goal of the period. As Anaheim continues to get secondary scoring, Pucks comes to the front of the net. And Perry digging for it begins to mix it up after the whistle. Once again, this time it's Tanev who has a hold of him and a look of consternation to say the least on John Tortorella's face. You can feel it slipping away. You know, he said the other day that you know this this three-game losing streak that the Canucks have been in is it was we don't get a four-check going and our defensemen are under siege. And they're under siege in this second period for the same reason. It, it's been over 21 minutes since Vancouver or went over 21 minutes before they got a single shot on goal. Under three to play second period as the Ducks have drawn even. And Allen gets one to skip across. Penner very nearly had an unsuspecting lack. And, and that's the other thing that happens when you shoot the puck. You get bounces sometimes. And uh, that puck's to lay with right to Dustin Penner. Valeski's third of the year is tied. Woken up here in this middle period. Corey Perry shows his athleticism here, knocks it down with the hand, sweeps it all in one motion. That was a good save by Lack. He read it 
perfectly, was out at the top of the goal crease, challenging Corey Perry, and you can see there's not much room behind the big netminder. Perry without a goal in his last seven games, but he has six assists in his last six. Pagliano got it to the front of the net, and then it caroms right back to him. Serves it up, and Boyden sweeps it wide. Big hit from Cagliano on the near boards, and Santorelli absorbs that and clears the zone. Garrison sends it in, blockered all the way in the near wall by Jonas Hiller, and the Bronx cheer at Honda Center, as that is officially the first shot on goal with a period for the Canucks. Daniel Sedin trying to turn around a bit as he came from behind, and that Hiller covers up. Well defended by the Ducks, and uh, Jonas Hiller just gets down early and shuts off the short side. And with Vancouver playing last night and the Ducks capturing all of the momentum here in this period, that next goal obviously huge. It's either going to be devastating to Vancouver or it'll give them a little bit of hope that they can hang on in this game. Because right now, that's what it looks like. He's trying to hang on. These teams will meet again in 10 days here at Honda Center. And then after that, they have two more meetings late in the year up in Vancouver. The Ducks have yet to visit the Canucks this season. But two late season games within the division against the Canucks could loom large. Oh, Panino sent awkwardly into the end boards. It's good to see him bounce back up as he and Winnick were in on a board check. Solani joins the fray in the corner. Finds an open can foul. Settles it. Wrist shot block. He has to turn to recover it as it comes to neutralize. Santorelli getting in the shooting lane that time. Lovejoy in a hurry and he drifts it over top of the goal. It hit the top of the dasher board and went on a play. Kevin Bieksa may have got away with one on this hit on Nick Benino. He went out for the cross check on Corey Perry. That's a cross check. Moving to the back of Benino. And uh, he sends him, boy, hit first into the board. And Benino does a good job to get those hands out in front of him. X has always been a physical presence. Leads the Canucks in hits this season. As I mentioned earlier, he's the top penalty minute man on their blue line as well. Down to 90 seconds to go in the second period. And a face-off to the left of Eddie Lack. A rare draw for Kyle Palmieri, who tries to go forward with it. And able to chop it out deflected off the stick of campus Lindholm so no ice and Boschner pulls up and he's tripped up in a penalty coming up to the Canucks. Sestito will get the game here that would have resulted in a golden scoring opportunity and that's a call you have to make. Yeah and Sestito knows it. Boschman cuts back and there's the stick in between the feet of the Anaheim defender. Boy, what a chance here. 117 remaining in this second period. The Ducks with a power play opportunity and a key offensive zone faceoff. Second power play chance of the night for the Ducks. Just their fourth in two games against the Canucks this season. And yet to break through with the extra man against Vancouver. Sestito tops the 100 penalty minute mark with this two minute minor for tripping. Benino beaten on the draw by Ryan Kessler. Richardson gets to it in the corner and sweeps at the length of the ice killer. Quickly out to get it. And he's forced to reverse it away from the penalty killing four check. One minute remains, second period. The Ducks have come from two down. Ross Square to Sue. Getzloff gains the line. His pass deflects to follow. Back to Getzloff. Side of the net, Perry. Great pass across, and that was broken up. Trying to find Petter, excuse me, it was Benino. And that's off the toe of the stick. What a chance. Uh, look, look at the expression on Nick Benino's face. Corey Perry, a little bit too hot, perhaps, the pass. May have been disrupted, that pass, down low by Dan Hamuse. It was Hamuse's stick that was down there in the passing lane, but... The Ducks come within an inch of taking the lead. Pictures worth a thousand words. The expression of Nick Benino said it all. He stays out to take the draw and wins it. Getzloff walks the line, whips it to the net. It bounces off of Penner and then pinballs through the slot. Hanson clears, and again, it's Hiller quickly out to play. 
but forced to put it behind the net by Santarella. Half a minute to go in the period as Getzloff on his horse from behind the net. Leads it ahead for Penner on left wing. Hits the brakes in the corner. Jams it along and Getzloff will go get it. 20 seconds left in the period. Behind the net, can't jab it through for Perry, and it squirts free. Richardson and Hansen feed it back into the Anaheim zone. Fowler looks up. Five seconds left in the period. Benino across the line. Perry will wind and let it rip. That's wide, and the period will come to a close. 43 seconds of Anaheim power play time when the third period begins in what is now a tie hockey game. Yeah, 20 shots on goal for the Ducks, who, uh, boy, what a period it was. Absolutely dominant. It was all about the forecheck and getting pucks in deep. You heard Daniel Winnick reference that. Did a great job of it in the middle period, and now uh, the only question that remains is can they keep this pace up for the third? What a difference a period makes. The Ducks trailed 2-0 after one. They do all the scoring in the second while out shooting the Canucks 20-2 in the middle frame. They'll carry power play time into the third in a 2-2 game. All rights to this broadcast are reserved in any rebroadcast, recording, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the Anaheim Ducks is expressly prohibited. A comeback in the second period has drawn the Ducks even with Vancouver. Now 2-2 as we head towards the start of the third period of play. We talked in the pregame show. We talked earlier, Brian, about secondary scoring for this Anaheim Hockey Club. Not only secondary scoring, but consistent secondary scoring. These are all point-of-game guys over the last little while. It sure makes them a tough team to play against. And uh, going back to what you were talking about earlier and the coach saying that his, his third and fourth line plays well. He expects that they will outscore their opponents and win them an awful lot of hockey games, and they have certainly done that. One of the things Bruce mentioned when we talked about it this morning was he said, you know, the thing about your third and fourth lines is they're usually going to play against the third defense pairing. In other words, the fifth or sixth defenseman for an opponent. And he said oftentimes, you know, they win you the hockey game because they're going to get opportunities that your first and second line don't because they typically face the best defenders. And you got to still have the speed to get there, and you got to have the talent to finish. And uh, the Ducks have got plenty of those players on their roster. It's a, a tribute to the work the hockey operations staff has done here with, Anna, with these Anaheim Ducks because, uh, boy, they're loaded. And a lot more coming as well. Third period begins with Anaheim still on the power play. But now down to 25 seconds left in that man advantage as the Canucks are able to clear. Fowler pulls up behind the Anaheim goal. Gets it back from Getzloff. 15 seconds in the man advantage. Benino wasn't expecting the pass. Wasn't able to receive it cleanly. And the Canucks are just going to whittle away the remaining seconds of the power play. And finally steer at the length of the ice. As Hiller stops it behind the goal, that'll do it. The penalty to Sestito is over. And the Canucks full strength. He comes flying out of the box and plays the puck immediately. Daniel Sedin drops it for Brother Henry. Pass across. Off the side of the net as Santorelli was in too deep by the time he was able to receive the feed. Campus Lindholm knocked down. Back to the line. The X is I don't think Hiller ever saw it. Santorelli was parked in the goal crease. And the Canucks have the lead back. You know, this is a redirect of a point shot. The, 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 the key is, is that he gets the puck on his stick. Watch him walk the line. Moves laterally and then a quick little snapshot. And it hits something. Boschman is out there as well. I'm not sure who this puck goes off. But it gets past Cogliano and then changes direction right on the doorstep there. I think it's Daniel Sedin that got a touch on it. A huge goal for Vancouver. Remember, Anaheim came out and scored early in the second period. To give themselves some energy. The Canucks take a page out of the Ducks book. Well, the short-lived remainder of the power play went by the boards without the Ducks coming up with a goal. And then just moments later, it's the Canucks to regain the lead. David Booth bumped by Botnan as he works the puck into the Anaheim zone. And Allen... Trying to send it around the boards. It went off a Vancouver player and it skips all the way back. Vancouver goals. Stops. And a penalty coming up to the Ducks. 
to work on the hands, tried to force the turnover. You know, we know Benino has a very quick stick. And it always boils down to whether or not he makes contact with the hand. He does right here. There's the chop, yeah, onto the right hand. That's a good call by the referee. It was that slash onto the right hand of Hamus that forced the turnover. Were it not for the Vancouver power play tonight, they would be in distress. They're two for two with the extra man and leading three to two, a chance to build their lead again. Getzloff doing the heavy lifting along the wall, but Garrison holds in the clearing attempt and then throws it over the glass and out of play. Jason Garrison is another point man on the power play that has been asked by his head coach John Torella, Tortorella to hit the net more often. He said that there's been a lot of those shots launched in recent games. He just hasn't put on the goalie, forced him to make a save, create any kind of a rebound. He has over 100 shots on goal this season. Three of his four goals have come on the Vancouver power play and now he starts from behind the Canucks net. Garrison, big free agent signing a couple of years ago, coming over from the Florida Panthers. Daniel Sedin works it down low. Allen got a stick on it. Sestito recovers in the corner. The Canucks possess. Behind the net, Henrik Sedin, and he angles it slowly to the line for Brother Daniel. Both of them with a couple of points in this game tonight. They officially gave the last goal to Bieksa. And I think if they do a little further review there, they may see a tip from Daniel Sedin. Hendrickson, he puts it in front, sprawled as Hiller. He doesn't have it. Kessler takes it behind the net. Well, dangerous looking play. Ducks fortunate. Now the Sedin's working out high. Hendrick back for Daniel. Serves it over. Garrison's shot padded away by Hiller. Comes right to the front of the net again off a of stanchion and missing everything. Goes Kessler and the puck clears the zone. Canucks making changes on the power play and they lose it at center. Winnick Isis. Well, a scramble that the Ducks survive on that last power play sequence for Vancouver. Remember that one. I mean, this, this is turning into a game. You really don't know what to expect from it. Huge shifts of momentum in tonight's game. A similar feel as mentioned to the game the other night against the Edmonton Oilers. The difference being that Vancouver is just a much better team than Edmonton. Fowler breaks up a pass and out of the box is Benino. The pass tipped to him and he's across the line. Joined by Cogliano. He finds a trailer. Coy Moon. He didn't get much on it. Blocker saved by Lack. That puck was fluttering on him and it wouldn't lay flat. He was also at the end of a shift and did not have a lot left in the tank. Benino gets it out of his skates off the glass and the foot race. Pileski goes after it. They wave the ice. But the X has still beat him to it. And up speed into the Anaheim zone. Only having gloved away by Brian Allen. Moved quickly up and out by Sammy Botman. Pileski has one of the two Anaheim goals. Rifles it in off the stick of Paul Mary. And he's tracking the X. David Booth. The near side throws it into the middle of the ice. Gets off, can't reach it. VX gets it deep. Miller plays it for Botman on the backhand up the wall, and Paul Mary clears the center. Counts down by Penner. He has Getzloff with him. Penner backhand. Oh! Driving the net was Getzloff, and Lack had that one just glance off of it. Things have opened up a little bit here in the early going of the third. Yeah, they certainly have. I and mean, there have been opportunities off of the rush for both teams. Perry flies in, goes wide on Hamus from behind the net back to the point. Boschner serves it over. Lindholm just uses the boards to play it up and then has to retreat as it comes back. He held it in. His wrist shot floats on net. Black through a screen, gloves it. There's a one goal Vancouver lead on the power play. Watch this puck come right down to the crease area. There's a couple of Vancouver players there. Nobody could get a direct tip on it. And Hiller was down on his wallet and it was a little bit fortunate on that one and then Saka Koivu end of a long shift did not get much on that bid Dustin Penner looks for Ryan gets lost Black was able to fight it off face off to the left a 
of Eddie Lack celebrating his 26th birthday here tonight at Honda Center. The native of Sweden. And the Canucks able to clear. Henrik Sedin hooks it into the middle. Santorelli. It's a chopped off his stick. And it goes right to Hiller who covers it up. I mean, John, we've been talking about the depth of this Anaheim team. They've got more depth coming. Emerson Edom named the AHL Player of the Month for the month of December. In nine games, 15 points for Edom. He's followed that up, by the way, with four points in the first two games of January. And I've said all along, Emerson Edom is going to be a real good pro and a long-term member of this Ducks team. The news down on the farm, very good for Anaheim. Paul Mary trying to bust in, and it's not off the stick, but kept in as it laid on the blue line by Lindholm. Now moving forward, looking at Emerson Eden and what his pro experience would be. An elongated experience in the American League and an opportunity to play as much in the situation he's playing in right now, Brian, may be as valuable as anything at this point in his career. You know, there's no point in him being here if he's not going to play a lot and play in critical situations. He's playing in every critical situation in Norfolk. Up swept behind the net by Yannick Weber. Ducks change and carry off the bench, able to hold it in. Otten steps up and loses and mounts it past him. And the physical play continues as Allen put the body on Hansen. Cleared back for Perry, two on two, and he lost the puck at the blue line. And he's in Botten joining the rush. The Ducks, young D are coming. Perry gets it from Bennett. Cuts in, pass, save last. That's a good stop by the young player. Gets off Penner and Perry line. Has a lot of life right now. And this one is a souvenir as it's deflected over the glass in the Vancouver zone. An early third period goal by the Canucks has given them the lead again. Now we're right where we expected to be, Brian. <laughs> Pretty much so. There's been so many close games uh, involving the Canucks and Ducks in their last 20 meetings. Uh, you can see Vancouver's won nine of them, and Anaheim's won 11. Goals have been pretty much even in 11. Games have been decided by a single goal. Six overtime games, five shootouts. It's a hotly contested rivalry between these two teams. They will meet three more times before it's all said and done this regular season. Separated by a goal right now. With Vancouver on top three to two. An icing ball here against the Canucks. Estito thought he had the red line. The linesman said no. Last chance to get a Ducks holiday pack. They come complete with two tickets to three Ducks games and Ducks branded gear as well. Order now at AnaheimDucks.com slash holiday pack. I guess that's the official end of the holiday season. You can't get the holiday pack anymore. Move into January in the new year. The Ducks will wrap up this homestand here on Tuesday against the Boston Bruins. Head back out on the road for a brief two-game foray to Nashville and Phoenix. Right now, a little matter of 12 and a half minutes left as, again, the Canucks will be called for icing. And Anaheim down 3-2. Well, Vancouver is not going to take any chances here. No passes into the middle. You're unsure. And they'll take as many icings as it takes to slow the pace of this down this game down. You know, uh, the rush has been something that has been dangerous for the Ducks here in the second half of this hockey game. In fact, eight of their last ten good scoring chances have come off of the rush. Well, you know, John Tortorella wants to protect this one. His team has struggled in division play, winning only six of 14 games within the Pacific Division thus far this season. Gets off, slides it over, Perry's backhander. Fought off by Lack, who lost his stick. It in. And the goal stick now shoveled back to the Vancouver netminder by Dan Hamuse. Penner, who initially did the work down low, trying to get it back again, and Tanev gets it up, and Ferrio gets it out. Ducks counter nicely. Perry right back in. Gets off the trailer and his one timer over top. Boy, he got a lot on that. Penner was driving the center lane, and Getzloff just rips it wide. 
Weiss from behind his own net plays it away and the Canucks use the boards to clear him. He's got it ahead. Booth loses it though. And Perry tries to sneak it through. Gets locked. Kept it alive for Cogliano. Swats it down low. Cogliano pursues the puck and Lovejoy holds it in as he knocked it away from Booth. Wipes it to the corner and Koivu sends it across an empty slot. Fowler tracks it down. Silverberg covers the point, takes the shot just wide. Good traffic in front. Black never saw it, never moved. Lovejoy holds on the near point. Cogliano rips it back. Fowler finds the open man. Silverberg walks in. Club save, and he lacked. Silverberg looked up, and I think he was surprised he had as much time and space. I think he wanted to give this puck to Cogliano. Here's the chance for Corey Perry, and that pass from Getzlaff just not quite in his wheelhouse. He couldn't get it away immediately. It allowed Lack the opportunity to get across, and then Silverberg damages the Vancouver Canuck logo on the jersey of Eddie Lack with that shot. Face off control by the Canucks as Anaheim with a push here. Botman holds it in, and Savani's pass across broken up by Hansen. Hansen strides the other way, pops it back. Big collision between Paul Mary on the far boards and Weber. Bucks the other way outside, drop pass to Paul Mary, steps in, takes the shot back with a healthy rebound, but it's collected by Richardson. And this play with Paul Mary getting to the middle of the ice and getting that puck into the pads of the goal center, creates a rebound. The Canucks were trying to change and just left the puck in the neutral zone, but you know, has it taken away and Hamus gets to keep the other way. Perry takes a big hit but moves it ahead and Lindholm into the middle of the ice. Touched nicely by Penner to get slop. His bid is blocked by Tannen. Lindholm in the neutral zone. Feeds it across. Ducks onside as Perry strides in. Lays it back for Penner. Poked off his stick. They'll get it back on the dash. Penner out of the corner. Got it to get slop on tight quarters as it was poked away. Well, the Canucks do a good job collapsing down low. Recognizing the big line on the ice for Anaheim. So all of their five players defensively were well down below the hash marks. Speed through the neutral zone. Silverberg into the middle. Cogliano gives it up. And a shot by Coy who turned away by Lack. The Canucks nudge it to center. Good hustle play by Lovejoy who hinged over to spot at three. Ferriero gets it into the Anaheim. And there's some pace to this third period. Coy Lays it back and it's Cogliano on right wing. Stutter steps into the Vancouver zone. Lays it back. Late coming off the bench. Walking through the slot. Botman hooked it against the green line. He had Silverberg lurking at the far post. Ducks just attacking every time they get the puck. Botman again storms in. Got it on net. A stick save by Lack. Allen's shot hits a fallen stick and skitters across the zone. Botman takes the hit to keep it in as BS. The exit delivers the physical punishment and now feeds it around the dash. Palmieri knocks it down. Loose puck picked up. Benino turns and fires block. Palmieri walks in front and he ran into Valeski. Too bad. Boy, he had a lane and a quick move to the front of the net. Ducks counter again. It's Valeski. Fires and lap. Fought it off. Lovejoy pinches. Collects. He gets it to the net. Knocked down as Palmieri can't pull the trigger. Valeski gets it back to him. Into the slot. Fowler fanned on it. He shot off escape. Back to Fowler again. This looks like a power play. He gets it to the net. Rebound. Benino. Full stop on the rebound by Lack. Oh, guys are just taking runs at one another now. Puck frozen underneath Santorelli and Paul Mary play on. What a shift. What a great shift by Anaheim. Multiple scoring chances. Watch out here. Possible two on one. The Canucks too tired. Santorelli. Can't get it as it was broken up in front by Fowler. Both teams trying to change. Lovejoy feathers it in. After it goes, Penner. Perry crashes in. Gets a piece of it. It's in his skates. Dug out by Penner. Gets a lot. Looks in front. Tip just wide. Racing in with Francois Bochemin. Well, he came down. I think Lack makes a stop. And it's about all the Canucks can do just to flip the puck out at this point. What pressure from the Ducks. Hard around and in again. Bolshevik sends it. It comes around near side. Hamus crunched by Perry. Turns the puck over. Bolshevik in the corner helps out. Cogliano all over it as well. This is 
is unbelievable. The Ducks have just been swarming in the Vancouver zone for almost three full minutes. Getzloff gets it back. Motion up. Walks to the middle. Getzloff does the same. Bush returns to the net and Cagliano couldn't get a stick on. Richardson leads it out and the Canucks able to get it over the glass and out of play where they can catch their breath. All Anaheim in the third as the Canucks cling to a one goal lead. Well the Ducks are pouring it on and it has just been one scoring chance after another. Eddie Lack's been great. He's been very fortunate. That was four years. They move it down low. Kyle Palmieri drives in front of that. Actually ran into his own player. And later on would get an opportunity to get to the rebound. And Lack just beat him there. Great save with the blocker. Francois Boschman thought he had tied this game up. What a pass from Ryan Getzloff to a streaking Boschman. It's off the post. Eddie Lack living right. And the Ducks still trail by one with just under seven remaining. The Canucks had the first eight scoring chances in this game. Since then... They have three. The Ducks have 28. And Eddie Lack continues to keep the Canucks on top, three to two. To the point Lovejoy's shot, and it's Lack who holds on. Just 20 seconds off of the TV timeout, and Anaheim is right back in the Vancouver zone at it again. Ben Lovejoy, I just maintain, he's just shooting the puck so much better, John, than he has previously in his career. Players will tell you it's a combination of, of practice, finding the right sticks. But you can just see it when he handles it now. His, his first thought is, I'm just going to rip it. I'll score in two goals, two minutes and 43 seconds apart on your slap shot. You do that for your confidence. He did that Friday night against Edmonton. Two fastest back-to-back -back goals by a defenseman in Ducks history. What a move by Lindholm as he collects that puck and sends the Ducks the other way. Gets left. Stop and go move for Penner. Into the goal crease off of Lack. He didn't know where it went. It went up over top of it. I think it might have hit the post. Perry trying to jab it in front. He can't split two defenders. Kessler's there to pick it up for the Canucks. Vancouver trying to put an end to a three-game winless streak. 0-2-1 coming into tonight in their last three. And I'm trying to continue their home dominance. Looking for their 13th win in their last 14 games. 16-0-2 at Honda Center. But that's in jeopardy right now. 5.45 to play third period. The Canucks three and the Ducks two. Offside is the call as Bolesky loses the handle. And Sestito touches within the offensive zone. Buckle your seatbelts. The stretch run when we return. Well, as promised earlier in the broadcast, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Late. It was early in the third period when Kevin Bieksa got one through. And right now, it's the difference in the hockey game. Yeah, all kinds of traffic in front of Eunice Hill. Difficult to tell from that angle whether or not that puck indeed had been redirected. That's a big goal for Vancouver. As mentioned, John, if, that, if they don't score, this game is not going to go their way. They've had a couple of breaks here in the third period, a couple of posts. That's what happens when you're getting a great goaltending performance. You get a couple of bounces, makes all the difference in the world. Here's Koibu on a little chip play by Silverberg. Canucks gave up 49 shots on goal last night at Staples Center. They've given up 40 tonight here to the Ducks. Difference being, they lost last night, three to one. They lead three to two here with just over five to play. Daniel Sedin lobs it into the Anaheim zone. Santorelli spins his man Fowler around and he'll reverse it to Lovejoy. On his horse, Ben, trying to settle the puck as the Ducks get changes. Hinges it back and Fowler sends it ahead off the stick of Bolesky. Now it's Bolesky, Palmieri, and Benino together as they stride into the Vancouver zone after. All three Anaheim players in deep. Excuse me, John. Sestito able to clear it back. And now has it below the goal line. The Ducks are going to make the Ducks play a 200-foot game if possible. Lindholm showing off some stick-handling moves, and he angles it around the boards. Here's Palmieri. Passes it over. Oh, and unable to handle it cleanly was Bolesky. What a play. What a play by Lindholm working that puck out of the defensive zone. Launching the counterattack. Chant from the Vancouver faithful is Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. 
for those of us old enough to remember shades of the old Eddie Jockerman chant at times at the Garden in New York. And this is not icing, and oh wow, that's the reason it usually is icing because Botnan was in a vulnerable position. Now Perry in full flight. Gets it into the middle. It comes through to Penner. Good save, Eddie Lack. And that's his 40th save tonight. Well, this Anaheim team was an awful lot of fun to watch. They're young D jumping into the attack. Look at the legs on Lindholm and how he gets the head up, throws it into an open space, and then he's joining the attack as well. Unfortunate as Palmieri slips it across, and that puck is bouncing for Matt Pileski. And it was rolling for Palmieri as well, Brian. I think that's why he opted not to shoot it. He's having all kinds of trouble getting to settle. Long way to go, just under four to play, and the Ducks have had their foot on the gas pedal the entire third period. Solani trying to dig it free off the faceoff. Panino comes in, Richardson was sitting on it. And the Canucks get it behind the net. Tanev up the middle, clears the zone. Razwar Boschma sends it back ahead, deflected, and Solani picks it up. Drops it for Valeski, who sweeps it deep, and Solani in behind the net, unable to get free. Benino got a stick on it. Richardson loses it to Benino. His shot blocked and then whipped wide by Valeski, all in one motion. Black freezes it off the end board. He knew he had to get it away in a hurry. He did that, unfortunately. He just misses the short side pose. Good job by Boschman there to keep the loose puck alive. It's, it's the kick up to the stick by Bolesky. And then the hurried fire just misses. 3.21 to play. Getzloff comes out with Penner and Perry. Face off to the left of Eddie Lack. He's been just short of sensational tonight in a false draw. Ducks lose two seconds on the clock and the officials are quick to come over. I think they're going to put it back up on the board. 319. And I think the Getzloff line is probably going to play about two minutes. Now 321. They have added the extra time on. Off the drop. Perry comes in trying to go forward with it. Puck ends up on the wall and Richardson can't clear past one. Oh, Mosh pit at the line and the puck stays in. Getzloff. Great stick handling and then he loses it. To Kessler who ices it and we'll do it again in the Vancouver zone as Fowler gets to the hash marks. This lost, just lost the handle. He made a couple of nifty little stick handles just inside the offensive blue line. But couldn't get it to settle down. Shots are 42 to 18 in favor of the Ducks who trail 3 to 2. And the Canucks are just hanging on for dear life here. Both teams have their timeouts. I would imagine we may see one, if not both, used down the stretch here. Richardson wins the draw, held in at the line by Lovejoy. Gets it to Penner. Fires it high on net, and Lack stays on his feet to block her it away. And that one went into the Vancouver bench on the clear, so the faceoff comes back in to the Canucks zone. <laughs> They're just trapped. They cannot get out, Vancouver. And the Ducks, very active defense, pinching down the boards, fighting. Through the order they can to keep a puck in the offensive zone and just need to figure out a way to solve Mr. Lack. 2.48 left. Now Koibu, Silverberg, and Cogliano come out. Face off in the ring to the right of Black. And the Ducks win it. Fowler one timer just wide. Came off the end boards to Silverberg. Amus muscles him off the puck. And Lovejoy pinches but can't keep it in. Good effort by Henrik Sedin to get it deep the other way. Fowler reverses it. Lovejoy up the wall. And Silverberg forced back. Daniel Sedin hit. And Santorelli behind the net recovers. Well, this is valuable offensive zone time for the Vancouver Canucks. Silverberg just lobs it out of the zone. And Hamlin taps it to the near wall and then packs it back. This will be an icing call. And with 2.10 left in the game, we might see a timeout here from Tortorella, John. Yeah, I was just about to say, I expect Tortorella to use one at some point here. His team continually icing the puck. He may want to try to keep it in his back pocket if possible. He's asking his uh, assistant, do I take it now? He decide not to. Ducks get fresh legs over the board. 
That's Glenn Gullitson to his right, the former Dallas Stars coach. Off the draw, Benino gets it down low off the back of the net. Paul Mary held by Tana behind the net, couldn't get to it. Oshime all the way below the hash mark, plays it back to the point. And the point covered there by Lindholm. Oh, it's unlucky. Unlucky. It was a great play by Lindholm. He had no angle, so he had to flip it off of the glass, but just the bounce off of the glass a little bit too high, and it goes up and out of the play. Look, it's just a high school play, and he shows unbelievable poise and patience to get it past that Vancouver player who was coming right down the boards at him. About 55 left in regulation. 3-2 Vancouver. And Benito breaks his stick on the draw, losing it to Richardson. Again, the puck cleared the hard way. They waved the icing, though, on the Canucks. Oshaman battles it up the wall. Paul Mary couldn't find it, so Francois picks it up and leads it across the line for Daniel Winnick. Winnick pulls up, trying to get it to the net. It deflected wide. Benino keeps it deep. Around to the corner. Winnick gloves down a clearing attempt. Has a man in the slot. Benino scores! as Boschma tried the home run pass and he missed Silverberg 26.7 seconds left in regulation. Coaches fear defensive zone faceoffs in games like this. And how many times did you see a game decided with a key offensive zone draw won by your opponent? Key faceoff here to the left of Hiller who's been a lonely man since the opening period. Koivu just won his fourth of his last five draws that he has taken, and this one is not going to go for icing. They wave it off. The Ducks gave up only eight shots on goal the final two periods on Friday to Edmonton. Santorelli gets a rare bit away as Hiller makes a blocker save in the final seconds. And that, for the Canucks, just their seventh shot on goal since the first period. And the Ducks continue to produce points at home. They come from behind to force overtime, which is next. 
Well, you look at the shot totals in the second and third period tonight, and it tells the story. The Ducks have just pounded the Canucks for the last 40 minutes. But it took a relatively late goal by Nick Benino to tie this game up. Good play by Daniel Winnick to keep that puck in and then to deliver a strike. Quick release by Benino. And we are heading into overtime. Well, if you call 18:33 relatively late. It's relatively it's late. Relatively late. The Ducks had not pulled their goaltender. And what a dominant final 40 minutes of regulation we've seen here tonight. Both of these teams have thrived in the five-minute overtime. The Canucks are five and two in games settled in the four-on-four. Four. The Ducks are four and one. Each team has earned a point here tonight, and the Ducks' streak in this building continues. So there's a good chance we will see scoring chances in the four-on-four. Four. John Tortorella's team hanging on down the stretch, to say the least, on the back end of back-to-backs after having played up the road last night. And right off the draw, Cogliano's going to press the issue. He gets it to the net. Black lets it hit him, and he reels it in. It's all straight lines with Andrew Cogliano and great away speed. It doesn't hurt. Kick off the faceoff. Again, six seconds that took for Cogliano to get a hold of that puck, skate about 75 feet, and snap a little wrist shot. Again, it keeps the pressure up on Lack. It forces him not only to make the stop, Control the rebound. That one he handled no problem. Face off to Lack's left. Richardson is the top face off man for the Canucks. Into battle for you. The linesman goes down. The Ducks get the puck. Love joint. Slides it over. Foul and winds. Fires. Lack got a piece of it. It comes around and out. And Hiller says, you know what? I haven't touched the puck very much in a couple of hours. So he comes out to play. Lovejoy dusts it off from behind the net and now forced back by Richardson. He weaves to the corner of fine open ice. Lobs it up the wing, but Koibu's changing. No icing. And the Canucks will get fresh troops as well. Sellout crowd at Honda Center on their feet with rhythmic applause. 45 seconds into overtime. Tied at three, Kevin Bieksa. Up the right side, serves it in around the boards. Hiller stays put. Kessler. Trying to kick it up from his knees. Boschner saucers it over to Silverberg and gets it back. Lindholm moves it ahead, and now Silverberg one on two into the Vancouver zone. Holds on to the puck to the corner, hits the brakes. Ducks get changes. Back to the point, it's Lindholm. Thinks better of it. Near circle, gives it to his defense partner. Boschner slides it over. Benino has trouble getting the handle from a bad angle. Got it on net. Just threw it, and it went off the shoulder of the goaltender left. Look at Lindholm give Hansen absolutely no quarter. And he comes up with the puck. Angles it ahead to Perry who tries to one time it and rolls wide. Now Lindholm forced to retreat. As the Canucks come up with it, they'll get changes and roll one in right on goal. Hiller takes it off the stick and hangs on. 319 left in the extra session. Hampus Lindholm is going to be something, folks. I'm telling you. You were talking about the pressure. You know, look at the confidence of this young man. How well he defends, how well he skates and moves his feet. And to force a turnover against a very, very quick player like Anna Cancer in the overtime, I think, speaks to a lot of the skills that uh, the young man Lindholm possesses. Plus 11 in his last 11 games, Hampus Lindholm. Now they'll drop it. To the left of Hiller, gets off, goes forward with it, and Perry joins him through center ice. He lobs it in the alley oop that Perry can't get to. His hand he spins him off. Lovejoy won't give up the blue line, and now back come the Canucks as Hamus joins the rush. To the corner, Stickhan is in behind, and that Fowler leaning on it. Gets it to the side, and then Henrik Sedin gives it to Daniel. He fires, and that's off of Hiller to the corner. Tanev swings it down low. Henrik to Daniel. That's changing. Can't have into the middle. Gets the feed. Comes for Garrison and he missed high. Henrik into the middle and Perry intercepts. Lays it back for Fowler. The Ducks will get changes. We're over halfway through the overtime. Fowler leaves it behind the net. And Sammy Votman picks it up. Watched by Santorelli, the open man is Allen, who again diagonally sends it into the Vancouver zone. Well, the crowd is into it. 
Garrison sends it around. It's knife back to him. He'll go up the middle and Botman again pressing the issue. His point covered by Paul Mary. Allen tries to go back to Paul Mary off of Vancouver's stick. That'll be another souvenir. It's all about pressure in the four on four and getting a good angle on the puck carrier, forcing him to move into a position where you got him trapped. And the Ducks, have, for the most part, with a little bit more jump in their legs. Check that. A lot more jump in their legs in Vancouver. They're trying to keep that pressure up as much as they can. 47 Anaheim shots on goal. To 20 for the Canucks. A minute 59 left in overtime. And Koivu wins the faceoff. Goes through the feet of Lindholm, who now will retreat to the backside of his goal. Koivu takes it off the boards. Cogliano races and now cuts to the middle. Koivu gains the line. Goes against the grain. Can't drop it back. Devotion with the back checking. Ryan Kessler takes it away. Former Ohio State Buckeye lays it back for Henrik Sedin. Brother Daniel gains the line. Stick handles into the middle. Henrik below the goal line. This pass off a skate of Boschner went right through the goal crease. Henrik from behind the net rolls off his stick in front, and Cagliano prudently just flips it back. He's dangerous, isn't he? I mean, down low, the Sedins use their bodies so well to protect pucks. Daniel Sedin has his pocket pick. Here's Benito. But it's going to be a power play. What a stop by Locke. I, I was just giving the Sedins credit for protecting the puck. Uh, I put the whammy on him. And away goes Nick Benino. He was hooked there. Boy, that should be a penalty shot, John. Brian Getzloff out to speak to the officials. That, that's a clean cut breakaway where the hands of Benino were hooked by Piexa. So Anaheim will get a four-on-three power play for the final 66 seconds of overtime. And Bruce Boudreau wants to call timeout and draw it up. It'll be just the third power play chance of the night for Anaheim, but the rare four-on-three variety. They're 0 for 2 tonight. By Nick Benino, who tied the game with just over a minute to go, they had the game on his stick, and the exit tripped him, hooked him, and definitely got his money. We saw an assistant coach Mike Sullivan of the Canucks over there. Very, very vocal. Warning his players of what they've got to guard against. You know, the four on three is quite often a setup for a one timer, and you can usually generate that one timer from inside the faceoff dots. Benino, Perry, Getzloff, and Fowler, the four man power play unit for the Ducks, and the puck to the boards off the draw. Benino gets it back to Fowler, a bouncing puck that he hammers down low off the stick of Perry. Can't clear up the near boards, but Eno holds it in under a minute to go in overtime. Gets locked from Fowler trying to settle the puck. There's a lot of snow on the ice. Near a circle, Benino. Fowler gives it to Getzloff. They were reading that, and it's all he can do to hold the zone. Benino has to go off his stick to the corner. Tanev and Perry battle for it behind the net. Hand is hard around off the skate of Getzloff. He holds it in. Half a minute left in overtime. Fowler presses the issue. His shot is blocked right back to him. To Getzloff. He hammers it and hit Perry in front. Comes back to Fowler. He gets it to Bonino. 15 seconds to pass across. Getzloff takes off the skate. Perry on the doorstep. Fires it wide. 10 seconds left in overtime. Fowler up the boards. Loses the handle and the Canucks clear. Bonino back to get it. Anaheim gets on side. Two seconds left. Perry. left. And he just kind of shovels his puck. 
and it finds a hole between the wickets. Unbelievable. 0.6 seconds on the clock, and Perry wins it for the Ducks, and they keep rolling, John. The Cardiac Kids, how many late goals? Remember, the second game of the season, they won with under five seconds left in overtime. This is the third time they've done it late in the game. 17-0 oh, and 2 at home. And this one was perhaps one of the most unlikely. Oh, my goodness. What a, the last two periods were just absolute dominance from Anaheim. Corey Perry's ninth scoring chance of the game proves to be the only one he needed to win this one. What a comeback by the Ducks. What a way to snap a streak. Perry going through a goal-scoring drought, had none in his last seven games. Scores with less than a second left in overtime. John, it's about belief to me. They, they, they always believe that they can come back. They have a lousy first period. They fall down or fall behind by a couple of goals, but they hang in there. Well, what a night it was for Corey Perry. Lots of chances. As I mentioned, nine scoring chances in this one. It looked like Eddie Lack was going to be able to deny all of them. The Vancouver netminder, I, I thought, was just sensational. Fighting off opportunities, cross-ice passes down low. Good to stop the final bit by Perry, though. It was all about secondary scoring until the game was on the line with less than a second left. Perry wins it, and we listen in on tonight's three-star selection. Now, tonight's three stars of the game is voted by the broadcast media and brought to you by Honda. Tonight's third star of the game. From the Ducks, with an assist, number 21, Kyle Palmer. Second star of the game with the game tying goal from the Ducks, number 13, Nick Bonino. And your number one star of the game with the game winning goal with six tenths of a second remaining in overtime, number 10, Corey. Had nine scoring chances, but you made this one count. How did you do it? Uh, it was just a shot on net. I knew there wasn't much time left, and I just uh, I kind of fanned on actually and found a way to go in. He had, did a great job tonight of taking away their time and space in the second, but particularly in the third. How did you do that? Well, if uh, if you watch the second and third, we played our style of game. You know, getting the pucks in, playing fast, and, and getting under D, and, and creating scoring chances. And, uh, when you when you can play that way each and every period, each and every night, you're going to have a good chance to win. And the Ducks improved to 17-0-2 here at Honda Center. Congratulations, Corey. Thank you. John, back upstairs to you. A very dramatic goal from a special player. Corey Perry wins it with six-tenths of a second left. Starting to feel like a special year at Honda Center.